whenever you're ready now. All right. Very truly I say to you, unless you eat from the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in yourselves. He who eats from the flesh and drinks from his blood has eternal life. John 6. So thank you for coming out. My name is Nicholas Vela. And um, this is a very important message. This is not exactly my personal interest. This is important for everybody. Now, this is in no way uh, refuting any religion at all, including Christianity. And quickly, I'd just like to give a special thanks to founder of Ethnobotany, Richard Evan Schultz of Harvard University, Mr. Robert Wheatlander, ethnobotanist Dr. Blas Rako, Dr. Singer of Harvard University, former J.P. Morgan Vice President R. Gordon Watson of Columbia University, mycologist Dr. Gaston Guzman, and student of Oxford University and Dead Sea Scroll scholar John M. Allegro, including countless others who have helped us bring us this information. And I will be using a combination of semiotics to decipher symbolism, um, in addition to a variety of other fields, including mycology, ethnobotany, and theobotany, um, just to name a few. And quickly, I'll just be going over a lot of topics, uh, Easter, prayer, marriage, Holy Grail, Christmas, Islam, Egypt, domestic symbolism, Hinduism, Buddhism, Greeks, some symbols of politics as well. Got a lot to cover real quick. And to summarize briefly, what I'm going to explain is how the Amanita muscaria mushroom and the psilocybin mushroom are possibly the combination of the blood and body of Christ, which I'll explain. And as well as the Last Supper, being a mirrored image of the fruits of the Garden of Eden. You have two fruits of the Garden, the Tree of Life, the Tree of Knowledge, and the Blood and the Body. And again, to clarify, that's the Almanita Muscaria and the Psilocybin. And uh, quickly to summarize, real, again, these are going to be mirrored images where Jesus is going to be represented by the serpent, the serpent offering the fruit, Jesus offering his body, and there's the two trees in the Garden, the Blood and the Body, and note the reindeer for later. Much of this information was brought to us by Oxford student and Dead, and Dead Sea Scroll scholar, John M. Allegro, and he deciphered the Dead Sea Scrolls. He was appointed to by the Jordanian governments to decipher these scrolls. And what he found out was that they were actually a uh, codex, the shamanic text that encrypted uh, mushrooms was actually the body of Jesus Christ. And this was also held, brought to us by Gordon R. Watson of Columbia University. And he deciphered the Rig Vedas and, and declared that their mushroom of immortality was this Amanita muscaria mushroom. And then, the, so this final piece of the puzzle came in 1957 when Life magazine revealed that in Mexico they were using a mushroom and they were calling that mushroom the flesh of the gods. And that's the psilocybin mushroom, the second kind of mushroom. And quickly here in the Venus figurines, we see the different psilocybin mushroom symbolism and the Amanita mushroom combination. And uh, it's quick to note that mushrooms are genetically different than humans and animals uh, and plants. They're their own kingdom. And uh, they're more similar to humans than they are to plants. They breathe oxygen. Uh, so that's just to name a few things. They grow in three distinct stages, which might where we get this trinity cycle in Christianity. They start off in the spores, which are omnipresent throughout the globe, including in the air that we breathe. And then they move into this network of mycelium, which is hooked up to all the root systems of the majority of plants on, on this planet. And then finally, the final stage of the trinity, the fruit body, the flesh itself. And again, this would be symbolism of the Holy Communion and Catholicism. They offer the golden cap of the mushroom. And then the drink here, which will be the drink from the red mushroom, which we might get into in a minute. It's quick to note the basic stages of the growth cycle. It starts off in this egg state, similar to a serpent egg or an Easter egg. And as it grows, uh, this what's called a veil, inner veil lifts, and a ring is left, which is where we get my, our marriage ceremonies, which we'll get into. And then scales can be left on the top, which is another symbolism of the serpent itself as well as the thorns of Christ. And then it goes into the grail stage, the final stage, where it can actually be a cup and a grail that you can actually drink from. And this is a picture in Kabbalism. Uh, it's 
common to know in esoteric Judaism called Kabbalism that the serpent and Jesus are actually mirrored images. Here we have Moses holding up the serpent on a staff as a symbol of healing, and then many uh, religious people will tell you that uh, Jesus was also crucified on a pole or a staff. These are uh, similar images. So when we see the serpent on the staff, it's actually an image of Jesus being crucified there. It just goes back to the mushroom. And here we have the mushrooms in their egg state, and a mushroom that looks like a serpent. That's where another serpent symbolism comes from. Here are actual serpent eggs. And then once it starts growing and the cap starts to pierce out, we get it looking like Easter eggs here, or Easter egg hunts. And then the universal veil. This is the again, universal veil. Here's the inner veil, uh, which we'll get into in a little bit, but it can attach onto the top, and that's where you get some of the scales that you click on. So once the veil lifts again, and the ring is left, the marriage ceremony, these are gills underneath the cap. And this is where we get the fish representation of Jesus Christ. As it grows up, it can form a round circular table. This is where we get the knights of the round table that protect the holy grail. This is also can be golden or orange or red. And this is right where we get our golden plates of Joseph Smith. And then it goes into the grail. It can actually fill with morning dew. You can actually drink directly from the holy grail of blood of Christ. We know that this is a psychedelic mushroom because in Siberia, uh, here's 2,000 year old cave art uh, depicting sacred mushrooms there. They're currently still using the Amanita muscaria mushroom in shamanism there. And what they're known to do is feed up to these reindeer and possibly drink uh, the reindeer urine because it converts the ibotonic acid of the mushroom into the muscimol psychedelic chemical for the shaman. So here we have a Santa Claus looking like the Siberian shaman feeding reindeer the apple, and of course the apple is a representation of the mushroom. And they, right there's, there's their reindeer on slaves there, that's common. So feeding of the reindeer, and this is where you get the sauna flying with this Rudolph in the red nose. And it's common to see reindeer encrypted into the images of the Garden of Eden, and this is just one of many examples. Here's the Dome of the Rock in Israel, and this is a symbol of the unopened psilocybin mushroom. And this is where much of the symbolism goes back to. In ancient Egypt, this is Isis holding out her wings with her horns and disc. That goes to the wings of this scarab beetle, which is actually a dung beetle that feeds off of cow dung. So that's why it has a cow horn, because it feeds off of cow dung. And then the golden cap psilocybin mushroom grows specifically on cow dung. And, and so this is why you have the holy cow producing the holy cow manure, which then you get the flesh of the gods from, so the dung beetle holds up the golden cap. One reason why Jesus is depicted as being born in the manger, because that's where the, the cow is. Here again, the falcon are bird-like symbols. This is just another uh, symbol of the scarab beetle with its wings disc above it, which is where we get the wings with the disc above it, and these are just a couple of examples. And it just goes back to this symbol here, here's the serpents guarding it, the golden caps of the psilocybin mushroom. And then here's just another example, this is a what's called a liberty cap, and in Europe they have sacred uh, psilocybin mushrooms that are actually called liberty caps. And then you have a serpent right above it. To depict that. And that's the Department of Army. Here in Hinduism, you have the holy cow producing a holy cow. That's where we get that quote from. And then you have the serpent around his neck. You have him depicted in blue because it's common for psilocybin mushrooms to bruise blue when they're touched. And then you have his wife here dressed in her Amanita attire. These are just a few examples. Uh, here you can see it more encrypted into the symbolism as a hidden into the artwork, because it's esoteric. Here is Shiva blatantly holding the, the mushroom. In Buddhism, we can see images of Buddha uh, and the mushrooms. Here you can see the cobras around his head as well. And uh, it's, his last meals were mushrooms as well, it's it. Here in Greek, 
the Ambrosia Nectar of the Secret Societies is said to be sacred mushrooms as well, and that was deciphered by Gordon R. Wallace, and there's an image for that. John R. Rush brought us this book, Mushrooms and Christian Art. Professor and Dr. John R. Rush, is, uh, he showed us that. It's the time, sir. Oh, okay. I didn't realize that went so quickly. Um, like I said, I can only go through a few. This was from the Catholic Church right in uptown here. The, and uh, here's the Pope dressed like the Amanita itself. And so, thank you very much. I have a question for you. Sure. Um, so, I, it's a sort of two questions. I, I guess for me to really understand the, this widespread use of a mushroom and sort of the symbologies associated with all these various religions, if it's so, so there are two things. Why? Okay, why does it show? Can you give sort of a an explanation as to why you think this appears everywhere because otherwise you get relegated to sort of conspiracy theory it starts to feel like that unless you can contextualize the why well, yeah sure and the why is because of the and yeah like i said there's so much information you get to and this literally just hardly even scratches the surface of we could go on for this forever but uh basically the why is because the experiences that these will produce are said to be so profound that these people are actually having experiences where they're believing, if not actually, or whatever's going on, they're getting a perception that they might even be in communication with divine beings, maybe even God, uh, something like that. So these people are actually using this as a tool to reach higher states of consciousness or to reach divine realms and things like that. So the argument is the mushroom really is the origin of all extra human belief and okay yep exactly okay yep, does anyone else have any i know we run time but i guess we're coming for here thanks